The sun is also a star, pages 126 to 128. Natasha. Harlem is only a 25-minute subway ride from where we are, were, but it's like we've gone to a different country. The skyscrapers have been replaced by small, closely packed stores with bright awnings. The air smells brighter, less like a city, and more like a neighborhood. Almost everyone on the street is black. Daniel doesn't say anything as we walk along Martin Luther King Boulevard towards his parents' store. He slows down when we pass by an empty storefront with a huge for rent sign and a pawn shop with a green awning. Finally, we stop in front of a black hair care and beauty supply store. It's called Black Hair Care. I've been into lots of these. Go down the street to the beauty supply and pick up some relaxer for me, says my mother every two months or so. It's a thing. Everyone knows it's a thing how all the black hair care places are owned by Koreans and what an injustice that is. I don't know why I didn't think of it when Daniel said they owned a store. I can't see inside because the windows are covered with old sun faded posters of smiling and suited black women, all with the same chemically treated hairstyle. Apparently, according to these posters, at least only certain hairstyles are allowed to attend board meetings. Even my mom is guilty of this kind of sentiment. She wasn't happy when I decided to wear an Afro saying it isn't professional looking, but I like my big Afro. I also liked when my hair was longer and relaxed. I'm happy to have choices. They're mine to make. Next to me, Daniel is so nervous. He's vibrating. I wonder if it's because I'm going to meet his dad or because of the politics of his parents owning this store. He faces me and tugs his tie from side to side as if it's been too tight the whole time. So my dad's really, he stops and starts again. And my brother's really, his eyes are everywhere except on mine. And his voice is strained, probably because he's trying to speak without breathing. Maybe you should just wait out here. He says, finally getting an entire sentence out. At first, I don't really think anything of it. I figure everyone's embarrassed by their family. I'm embarrassed about mine. Well, my father, at least. In Daniel's place, I'd do the same thing. My cheating ex, Rob, never met my father. It was just easier. No listening to my father's too thick, fake American accent. No watching him try to find an opening so he can talk about himself and all his plans for the future and how he's going to be famous one day. We're just standing in front of the store when two black teenage girls walk out laughing with each other. Another woman, also black, walks in. It occurs to me that maybe he's not embarrassed about his family. Maybe he's embarrassed about me. Or maybe he's afraid his parents will be ashamed of me. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. America is not really a melting pot. It's more like one of those divided meal plates with separate sections for starch, meat, and vegetables. I'm looking at him and he's still not looking at me. Suddenly, we're having a moment I didn't expect.